What's up guys? Welcome to this week's episode to We Are The Bonsai Supply. I am Jerome and this is Mari. Today we are gonna visit our friend Rodney Clemens in Georgia so we can learn a little more about winter care. Let's go check it out. Welcome to winter um, in Atlanta. This is our greenhouse but we call it the tree house and the reason is we've got a greenhouse and when Charlie goes did you water the greenhouse um, we don't want the mistake so we, we named this the tree house and that's what it's used for we can control the temperatures um, mainly in the spring is when we need it but it's got shutters we can open it up the sides um, pull up we've got three kinds of heat um, and so we we make sure we can heat it at any times so heaters go out lines go out power goes out and so we we have to compensate for all that some of the larger trees that we keep out here um, is simply because we don't want to move them into the tree house, which is what we call this. So they stay outside and they're protected by um, corrals of leaves or they um, sit out on the benches and we protect them with a heating pad and some freeze cloth. And so the freeze cloth will trap 15 degrees down in the ground and that's a lot. It, covers comes all the way to the ground and we put it out and take it back so this tree will look like it's on display for a lot of the winter time but we get down to 25 and it, it becomes um, covered we let it stay down to about 25 26 some, something in there and it depends on how nervous we get before we start um, covering them up but um, this is a good way to do it this tree here has been um, kept um, just insulated this way for winter um, since 1975 and it's worked perfectly and this is a, a pond cypress from um, Naples so it's a tough tree Atlanta to Naples how often do you water it or do you still water it when it's protected with the leaves you know it's that that same question people ask you <laughs> how often do you water your bonsai and, and it's um, when it needs it and so most of the winter time um, we might water this or check it once a week, once every few days. Then it starts in spring, it starts drinking a lot of water. Where in the summertime, it gets watered twice a day. And so, um, so it, it's a lot less in the wintertime because it's, it's basically, um, it's, it's gone to sleep. And so we, we don't really have to worry about it drinking too much water. Plus in this area, we get a lot of rain in the wintertime, just steady. And so, you know, we've had, uh, we usually average about um, six to eight inches in January. And it's, it's kind of nice until you get to say um, April, May. May is one of our dry months. So, um, this is kind of interesting because it's a, a large wisteria and this has a dark purple flower and it, it will have hundreds of flowers on it when it blooms. And it always blooms nicely and the, the buds come out, the flowers start moving and we get a freeze. And so this really shows off about once every three to five years. And uh, it's another one we have to move with. We've got a Japanese tractor, so it understands bonsai, but um, this one doesn't come in. trees in here um, when the temperatures start we can see in the future hopefully a week or so out when we're going to have temperatures that are going to go in the mid 20s and that's when we start really um, orchestrating bringing everything in and with help um, so Charlie and I Charlie checks the weather out my wife and I um, am in handling the the grunt part but we start bringing trees in at 25 and some of the um, 
the ones that are in small containers, the mame like this, and one this Chinese elm here, but the small containers, they are a little bit uh, more, uh, the, the cold weather affects them a little bit more. So we bring those in first and the larger ones that have more insulation just from the amount of soil we bring in last. So we, we kind of arrange this once the big ones come in, um, obviously, but um, we'll get the small ones in and put those in the very back or on the, the ground. Um, the, the beauty is about this temperature is the perfect um, mid range of the, um, the temperatures. You get up high and um, the heat rises and that stays warmer and down on the ground stays cooler. So we can adjust some of the, um, the needs of the trees by where we put them both level-wise and spots of the greenhouse. Some, we've got temp, temp, um, thermometers in all parts of this house, and we use that to where we can figure out exactly where the temperature changes are. And um, these are high-low thermometers, so we can see what they do at night and then during the daytime. But if we did not open this up and um, pull air in, the temperature on a cold day of say 25 would get up to above 100 in here and so we're we're always constantly ventilating so we've got doors that open the front sh shutters and again these side walls that come up um, and then of course the back fan which can pull everything through pretty quickly but, so everything's set on thermostats so they come on at different times uh, not, the thermostat for this is is me and um, so I get out and hand crank it and a lot of that's just because of power the loss of electricity I want to be able to still cool the place down so we can do it both manually and mechanically the greenhouse where we keep our tropicals of course during the winter time in the summer there's too much um, shade here so we have to wait till the um, winter when the leaves come off and then we can move the tropicals in here can treat our evergreens really a little bit different. And so um, we really let them stay out on the benches. They get good sunlight. Um, during most of the winter time, we put them down on the ground when we get into low twenties. And um, if we get lower than that, then we cover with freeze cloth or we do something a little different. It depends on the quality of the tree, the expense and all that. These are um, Japanese, um, pines, uh, black pines, and their um, cork barks. This whole bench pretty much is cork barks. And um, the cork bark is not as hardy as the black pine. So we get to the low 20s, and not only are they gonna be on the ground, they're either put under a bench and then covered, or we'll move some of the ones that are more expensive into our tree house so we can control that thing. But they come right back. I really out, appreciate so. um, you guys coming in the interview, but uh, being able to talk to people that um, are passionate about bonsai and, and are going to help the next level of people learning bonsai. Thanks for coming. This has been a lot of fun for me and showing you our collection and everything. We we do teach classes. We sell trees here. It's by appointment only, but um, you're welcome. To, this is Stone Mountain, Georgia at its best.